two major developments today have inched the Senate tax hike bill that much closer to passage. We're going to talk about both of those, and uh, we can talk about Doug Jones, whatever else uh, people have questions about, and you can put them in the in the comments section, and Eric, Eric can read them out. But if you haven't been in, uh, following along uh, today, one, uh, little Marco and uh, Mike Lee of, of Utah announced their support for the GOP tax hike. Uh, they, they had been pushing to expand the child tax credit so that all of the tax cuts that are in this bill add up to $6 trillion or more, almost all of them going to the wealthy. Their argument was give a little bit more to the poor, the working poor and, and the middle class by expanding the child tax credit. Uh, and they got a tiny bit. Uh, they did get a, they get did get a few hundred dollars more uh, for um, some work some working poor folks. The they didn't get everything that they were asking for, uh, but they're they're signing on. And Marco Rubio is not necessarily known as somebody with a with a stiff spine, and so I think he kind of knows that too. And so there's only so far that you can take the argument if. Uh, McConnell kind of thinks in the end that you're going to cave and vote for it. Anyway, now the election of uh, Doug Jones on Tuesday changes the calculus a little bit for McConnell. He can't mess around. He's got to get this thing done quickly uh, before uh, he can no longer resist seating Doug Jones and losing that extra vote. Don't forget there are, there are also some macabre problems that the, that the Senate has uh, that uh, Cochran, the senator from Mississippi, uh, is in very bad shape uh, physically, and it will be difficult for him to get to the, the Senate floor and vote. Uh, John McCain is in uh, Walter Reed and you know, also fighting a very, very serious and fatal uh, illness, and so it will, be, it will be difficult for him to get to the Senate floor as well, but I don't, I don't have any doubt that McCain can make it. Like if, uh, you know, he, he's, he's the kind of person that if he, if he's, if he wants to do it, he's going to power through and he's going to get there. Cochran, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about. And so if you don't get people to the Senate floor, you have less, uh, you have less wiggle room. That made uh, Bob Corker's vote uh, important. He's the one who uh, thinks that uh, Trump is uh, somebody who is the, uh, the, the, the child in an adult daycare center, he has said. Uh, and he has said that he wouldn't vote for anything that dramatically increased the deficit. This thing just blows a huge hole in the deficit. Uh, just minutes ago, he came out with his statement, uh, and he's also supporting the bill, and I can, I can read you some of it. Uh, his basic argument is, is this, that it's better than nothing. He said, in the end, after 11 years in the Senate, I know every bill we consider is imperfect, and the question becomes, is our country better off with or without this piece of legislation? I think we are better off with it. I realize this is a bet on our country's enterprising spirit, and that is a bet I am willing to make. In other words, what he's trying to say there is that, okay, yes, the JCT and CBO say this is going to blow a hole in the deficit, but maybe, just maybe, economic growth will go through the roof, and as a result, tax revenues will be up enough that it actually doesn't raise the deficit. There's nobody that seriously thinks that, and he's not, uh, he's sort of saying that it's, it might do that, but in the end he's saying uh, that he's gonna do it even though it's, even though it's a bad bill. Uh, he, has, he has another line that really gives away the game, which is, after great thought and consideration, I believe that this once in a generation opportunity to make US businesses domestically more productive and internationally more competitive is one we should not miss. And that is the reasoning right there, the once in a generation reason. That's, that's, that's what is driving Republicans uh, to, to go forward on this thing despite uh, the, the bad politics and the bad policy of it. They think that the window is open right now to get their $6 trillion in tax cuts that are paid for with some deficit spending and with four and a half trillion of tax increases on other people. They think the window to get that uh, is open now and if they don't do it, they might not get it open for an, uh, another generation. So, if uh, Eric, if there are any questions, we can throw it open to that now. Leanne Meyer. Leanne Meyer. Concerned about the increase to the deficit. Right. So, the, there there are a couple ways to look at uh, the the impact on the deficit. Uh, on the one hand, as long as you are the world's reserve currency. Uh, as the United States is, as long as the Federal Reserve 
can effectively uh, print money, the deficit doesn't actually have any impact on, on the economy. Uh, the, the only way it does is if the Fed has circulated too much money so that we start to see inflation. But that is a function not of taxes, not of revenue collection and balancing it off of that, but of, but of the capacity of the economy itself. That all said, deficits do have a political reality to them if they don't, if they don't necessarily have an economic reality. And so as you uh, take a big chunk of revenue away from the federal government, if Democrats take power again and want to spend, they, they find it politically difficult to do it uh, through deficit spending as Republicans are so good at scaremongering around it. And so it's harder for them to say, well, let's do single payer now or let's, uh, let's do uh, you know, free state college. What, whatever the program is, say, well, we can't do that now. We can't do their trillion dollar infrastructure because now we're all these trillions of dollars in debt because of this tax hike. They can raise taxes again. Uh, that's, that's extraordinarily difficult. But it, you know, I'm sure it's something that a lot of candidates are going to have run against, as they did back in uh, the 2000s. Everybody was running against the Bush tax cuts. And the way you kind of make these, t these cuts tax toxic is, is by calling them like the Trump tax cuts. I'm against the Trump tax because it's, it's easier to say that than it is to say, when I get elected, I'm going to raise your taxes. Because politicians don't, don't want to do that. But, they're, but if you can... Uh, lump it in with somebody whose approval rating is in the 30s, uh, and, and you and you can you know focus specifically on the estate tax. Corker mentioned, you know, hinted at that in the in his own statement. He's like, if I would have written this, we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have done things on the individual side that have no economic benefit. And one of those things is getting rid of the estate tax. You're benefiting a thousand or two families at the cost of hundreds of billions of dollars in lost revenue. Jeremiah is saying Republicans coming out to say, I'm not voting for this because they want tweaks. And then they say they'll vote for it, question mark. Is there any value, any good come out of uh, Rubio? Yeah, yeah. So the bill is better. Uh, it's a monstrosity of a bill, but it is, it is a better monstrosity than it was the day before Rubio extracted uh, another couple hundred dollars uh, for for working poor people. What what he what he wanted was a, a significant increase in the ch in the child tax credit and 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 to make sure that it is you know fully refundable up to a certain level. And refundable means that even if you didn't pay uh, enough in taxes, you still actually get money back. So you could owe two hundred dollars at the end of the year in taxes. Uh, but if the refund that you're owed is fourteen hundred, then you still get this this twelve hundred dollar check, and that's the earned income tax credit, for instance, is is refundable. So they want to do a refundable child tax credit uh, for working poor people. To, and, and you know, for some uh, working poor people, as a result of Rubio's staring down McConnell at the last minute, they'll get uh, something like four hundred dollars more at the end of the year, which. Is it's not to be sneezed at. Four hundred dollars is a lot of is, is a lot of money. It's not billions. Uh, you know, this is a this is a tax. This is a bill where they're, you know, slashing the the, the corporate tax rate almost in half. They're they're slashing the, the rates on the on the highest earners. Uh, so yes, it's nice that they're giving a couple hundred dollars to some of the hardest working people in the country as a result of that. But. Uh, it's not as much as Rubio actually wanted. But yes, every t when you have such a thin margin, whenever um, people say, I'm not voting for it unless this, the, the calculus for McConnell is, well, let's, let's just give it to them. On Wednesday, I was um, with the protesters, the ones that you see here on the screen, and they were inside Susan Collins' office. They had a meeting with her, um, but they were very disappointed. Um, they said... Um, that she was giving away her leverage by promising to vote for this in exchange for, in the future, addressing some of the negative impacts it'll have on health care. Yeah, and Susan Collins is getting totally played. Uh, she said she would not vote for this thing if it further lowered the, the rate on the highest earners uh, in the conference bill. They come out and do that. Uh, and she said that she had been promised that before this was voted on the House floor, uh, I mean, on the Senate floor, back from the conference committee, that Alexander Murray and her own bill, Collins-Nelson, 
both of which are designed to reduce uh, health care premiums, would be passed into law. In other words, she said, I'll vote for this on the Senate floor and I'll send it to the conference committee where they're going to work out a final bill. But before that sucker comes back from the conference committee, you're going to pass these bills that are going to stabilize the health care system. That's what she said she was promised. That's not happening. And so the two things that she said that uh, she was promised, she's getting neither of. Now, maybe at the last minute on the Senate floor, she goes and casts a no vote uh, and it still passes uh, 51 to 49. And maybe that's the way that she kind of salvages some of her dignity out of this because she's been played for a fool all the, all the way through it. Uh, but she would still be being played for a fool even if she votes no because she knows that it's a it's a meaningless vote at that point because it's still passing into law. The uh, the people that are getting arrested day after day are focused on health care much more so mm -hmm. than uh, tax cuts for the wealthy or for multinational corporations. Um, how valid is is that concern by comparison? Yeah, it's it's valid. I mean the main. You know, they're, they're looking at two things. The uh, individual mandate repeal would drive up uh, the cost of health care. Like, there's, there's no question about that. Uh, it would also lead to, you know, a significant uptick in the number of uninsured people. And at the same time, there are these rules that are called statutory pay-go rules, which say that if you increase the deficit by a certain amount, you must automatically reduce uh, Medicare, me Medicaid, other entitlement program spending. And they're arguing that that's going to happen. It, and these cuts to uh, health care programs are, are going to be used to pay for these tax cuts for the rich. Republicans swear up, or down, up and down that they're going to fix that, that, that pay-go rule and that the Medicare cuts won't actually take effect. And I think there's a decent chance that they will because uh, they don't want to get hammered uh, by the olds. On, on election day come come 2018 because they're going to be getting hammered by everybody else uh, so but, but we'll see without their pressure who knows so it's a, it's definitely a valid concern and it's a winnable fight